Welcome to the Ring of Faith, where we coach you through God's Word on how to become a knockout artist in life. Today our show is called, Who's Next? Years ago, there was a famous wrestler by the name of Bill Goldberg, and his saying was, who's next? He was like 180 and 0, <laughs> just an animal, and he's going through wrestling, just knocking everybody out. Yep. He's always like, who's next? That's right. Well, sometimes in life, things don't go exactly like we think they should go, especially when it comes to helping somebody. Sometimes we just need to say, who's next? Stick around to find out more about who's next. All things are possible. Welcome back to the Ring of Fate. Today our show is called Who's Next? Who's Next? And of course this whole show came about because Anthony, a friend of yours, passed away several months back. And I know it was a situation where you were praying for him and and things didn't go exactly like you hoped they would. Tell us about that. Yeah, my friend had called me or texted me on, it was a Sunday night, and he texted me and asked me to pray for him. He's going in the next day to get some, some tests done. He's having some heart challenges. and. Uh, so I prayed for him, and well, probably three or four o'clock in the morning, we got a call that he'd had a massive heart attack. Mm -hmm. He got to the hospital, so immediately I went over there after work, mm -hmm. and I was over there, I was praying for him, and I believe God, I believe, you know, you lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Jesus raised the dead, he tells us that the works that he do, we'll do greater works as well, because he goes, I mean, all the, I had all the promises, Mark 11, 23, you speak to those mountains, and I was over there for, I think, about nine days over there, every, almost every day praying, speaking faith into him, and well, he ended up passing away. Um, I don't know why. I don't mm -hmm. know why, you know, maybe, I, maybe my faith wasn't developed enough for what it was, but I don't know. But I don't stop believing God, and I don't stop on the promises, because he says his word's true. He's God, I'm not. I gotta keep moving forward. Well, right. that's where the whole show come about, who's next? Uh, my friend Carl and I, we, we used to, there was a wrestler years ago by the name of Bill Goldberg. He's a big, strong, tough guy. And my friend actually looked like he was a smaller version of Goldberg. <laughs> he was. Just an animal, had a goatee, <laughs> bald-headed, I mean, just a monster. And we'd always, you know, just pull it out Goldberg, go traps. And, uh, well, Goldberg's saying was, who's next? He's always going to whoop somebody else. Who's next? Well, who's next now? I prayed for my friend. He died. It didn't work out like I wanted. But who's next? Well, he's got a widow. And he's got kids. So that's who's next. Right, exactly. And, you know, life is full of questions. But I think that we decided to focus not on the question why, but on the question who's next. Mm -hmm. They're both questions, but one of them can be more effective. And so, you know, Anthony and I teamed up with our Ring of Faith ministry team, and we assembled this whole outreach where we could help the widow mm -hmm. of his old roommate and friend mm -hmm and her two sons do a renovation at their house. Check out this video from the Williams Family Renovation. home renovation. We're here at Jamie Williams' house. We're so excited to be tearing this bathroom up, yes. putting a new one in. We got Jonathan Vargas here from Tennessee Paint and Remodeling. We're out here.
here today at the house of Jamie Williams and her two sons. Sadly, Jamie's husband passed away a few months back and we've been out here all day transforming this house. We've been painting the house, we've been painting all kinds of shutters and wood, and we've been cleaning up the yard, we've planted, we've pulled trees, we've took a tree off the house, we've done so much in such a little time because many hands make for light work. God tells us if we're faithful with little, we'll be blessed with much. And, and in doing so, part of that being faithful with little is what are you doing to help others with little? Uh, it's been a, a huge takeaway in my life. So thankful for everybody that's come out here today. My husband and I, Anthony and I, with Ring of Faith Ministries, we are just so grateful to each and every one that's been a part of this, whether you donated or whether you came out today. We just want to say thank you. everybody came to help work on the house. Yes. The boys and I were completely blown away that everybody took their whole Saturday for us to help us and fix up our house, made our yard look pretty, worked on the bathroom. And for me, it wasn't just that they helped fix this or fix that. It was that people really wanted to help and they had fun doing it mm -hmm. and you know we can't wait to help other people and um, you know there's so many other people that just need a, it just takes a little bit for somebody to feel great and you know that's what that's what this did for us and you know we're, we'll just forever be thankful to all the people that helped and all the people that you know donate to this ministry um, there's just so much good that comes out of this all right well welcome back to ring of faith hopefully you enjoyed the video from our Williams family renovation outreach and I really enjoyed that outreach, right. Anthony. You know, one of the things I said to Anthony that night of the, the big event, we were out there several times, but there was one day where we did most of the work. And, you know, Anthony and I, we'd got up and drove to White's Creek early, and it's a, a little bit far for, from our house. And, and we put in 12 to 14 hours that day of, of physical labor from most of it. And I got home that night and I told Anthony, I said, that's the tiredest I think I've been in a long time, if not ever. Mm -hmm. I said, but that is the funnest <laughs> time mm -hmm. I've had in a long time, if not ever. It was so exciting and rewarding and to see the transformation when everybody just comes together. Mm -hmm. We had, you know, close to 30 people out there that day on the one day helping to renovate this yard and this house. And it was just so overwhelming, but it was just so satisfying to see the results and what the power of a team of people that are serving God can do. That's good, yeah. And it, it was. It was just the most amazing feeling. Like she said, we were so dumb. It's so my day tired. off. I work so much as it is. We got so much <laughs> going on. But then 
on my off day, I'm working over there 12 to 14 hours, you know, <laughs> chopping down trees, painting houses, I mean, all kinds of stuff. But it was just so rewarding. And I'm not just saying that to sound like a, you know, a TV preacher or anything <laughs> like that, <laughs> just to get you excited about helping people. I mean, it truly was. You reap what you sow. When you're out there helping somebody, that's when God really comes alive on the inside of you. Well, and one of the scriptures that inspired us through this whole process was James 127. It says, Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. I mean, that is one of the things that we are called to do in New Testament. I mean, this is James speaking. We are to not forget about the orphans, not to forget about the widows. And it says in their trouble, you know, finding out what would be a blessing to them, finding out what they need. I know for some ladies I've talked to, it's just somebody to talk to, somebody to hang out with, taking them to lunch. It may not be this grand renovation, but the Bible talks about not forgetting about these widows, these orphans, these people that are alone in the world. We know they're not alone with God, but he's put us here on this planet to help people and to be a blessing to them, and we can't forget about them. That's good. I like the CEV version. I don't know where that comes from. But Come on now. <laughs> religion that pleases God, that the Father must be pure and spotless. You must help needy orphans and widows and not let this world make you evil. So that's, that's the religion, because there's a mm. bunch of religions that God does not like, that he frowns on. Mm -hmm. But the religion that he does is when you help needy orphans and widows. When you're stepping out of yourself, you're caring for those that, that really can't, a lot of times they can't help themselves. Mm -hmm. But you step out, and we had a team together of awesome people that got out there serving with great attitudes. And I mean, I mean it, was, it was the most overwhelming presence of God that I, I felt in a long time when we were out there serving. It was really awesome. And I encourage you, if you see us, you know, talking about one of these in the future, you know, come out and be a part of it. We had some people there that watch our program. Mm -hmm. And then we also had some people that are friends and some partners that came out that day and some of our ministry team. It was a whole group of people that came out and helped with this outreach. But I encourage you, get in on this fun. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's awesome to do things for other people and to do things for widows and orphans and people who are in unfortunate circumstances and you just you never know when you might be in that situation and just how thankful mm -hmm. you know you would be if 30 people came out and just started working on your house and your yard I think all of us would be just overwhelmed in a good way to see that happen so I encourage you to be a part of that if we have another one come up that's true and, and even not just with us I mean I encourage you just to get into a local church and or just help find out somebody that needs help the best way to, to get your mind off of yourself mm -hmm. is to go help somebody else that's hurting. That's good. And when you do that, it's God's power is released on the inside of you. And this will help you to heal. All right. Well, that's in round one. Stick around. We're going to be right back with more. Who's next? Yeah, I know it's mine. Mine. Ring of Faith Ministries has a heart for hurting people. Whether it's a single mom, a military family, or a homeless man, God faithfully uses Ring of Faith Ministries as His hands and feet. As a result of your generous support, we can continue to meet the spiritual and physical needs of your community. We challenge you to ask God, what can I do to help? If you would like to become a sparring partner by giving monthly to Ring of Faith, go to ringoffaithtv.com, click on the Donate tab to set up your donation. You can also send in your love gift to P.O. Box 1110, Mount Juliet, Tennessee, 37121. And that's how you can help others become a knockout artist in life. Welcome back to the Ring of Faith there. Our show is called Who's Next? That's right, Anthony. Of course, in the earlier rounds, we showed a video of an outreach we did at the family of a widow and her two sons. And of course, this was a very special family to us because this lady was a widow of your former roommate. Mm -hmm. But one of the things we talked about through this whole thing and how this whole thing came about, who's next, is not focusing on the question why, but focusing on the question of who's next or what's next. God, what do you want me to do? You know, Anthony, with this renovation that we did for the Williams family, I heard a contractor give an estimate that it would have cost somewhere in the ballpark of $30,000 and up to do the type of things that we did for this mm -hmm. house and you know, all the tree trimming and the painting the house and some and of the bathroom tree work jerking and out of the ground and <laughs> <laughs> all the things that we did and I just think about if we had not asked that question who's next 
you know, this wouldn't have happened if we just dwell on the why. And so we have a few questions that we can ask when that happens, when you get into that place of, okay, how can I go forth now? And the first question is really just what now? What now, God? What do you want me to do now? You know, I'm, I'm moving forward, but I need some direction. It's okay to ask these kind of questions to God. It's called a relationship and not religion. Or maybe who's next, like we said. What now and then who's next? God, who can I help now? This didn't work out like I'd hoped, but who's next? Who can I help now? Or where and when? God, where and when do you want me to be? Do you want me to serve here or here or help this person? Do you want me to pray for this person? Where and when? We can keep asking these questions, and it will help us to go forth in life. And I encourage you, the whole time you're going forth, be meditating on God's promises. Mm Mm-hmm. Because this is what's going to get your mind off of the hurt, and this is what's going to help you heal from the inside out. So on 107.20, God sent his word to heal us. You're going to go forth, and this is going to release it on the inside of you. But you got to do something with that thought life. That's where the devil's going to try to attack you and try to keep you down. It's in Chris 4.4. He's the God of the world system, blinding the minds of the people. I, I encourage you to meditate on how much God loves you. Right. This is what's going to remove that doubt. It's going to remove that fear. It's going to remove all that on the inside and and i'm not saying that he, he you might get some revelation of what, what went wrong or why why this or why that meditate on how much he loves you romans 5 5 that god's love is shed abroad in my heart by the holy spirit uh john three sixteen, god so loved me he gave jesus ephesians three seventeen, i thank you father that i'm rooted and grounded in your love as you're going forth and you're asking him the question what now who's next where and when meditate on how much he loves you because that's going to help heal the Mm -hmm. hurt and it's going to empower you to keep going on and on that's so good anthony there's a scripture in exodus chapter 14 verse 15 and it's the lord talking to moses and he says why are you crying out to me i'm paraphrasing it says Mm -hmm. why do you cry out to me tell the children of israel to go forward In other words, he's saying, I told you what to do. I told them what to do. Why are you crying out to me? Why are you questioning why? Why are you concerned about the circumstances that you're in? I told you what to do. And I think about that with God's word. It's like, well, why this? I told you to lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. Well, what about my finances? I told you I would supply all your needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. But this person didn't receive me well. I told you to go into the world and make disciples of all men and tell people about me, tell people about Jesus. That's what we're called to do, and we need to quit asking the question, why, like he said, why are you crying out to me? Go forward. I told you what to do. It's in my word. That's good, and I like when you talk to uh, Joshua, too, and this was after Moses had died. <laughs> after, you know, he's, he's, got a, he's got a plan. He's got a pattern here. <laughs> he's got a plan. <laughs> Joshua chapter 1, 1 and 2, it says that after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun. Joshua didn't even have a dad. He was the son right. of Nun. <laughs> son of Nun. <laughs> Moses' assistant. Joshua was Moses' assistant. He's saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I'm giving to them, the children of Israel. Okay? Moses is dead. I still got a plan for you. Go forward. Go forward. Keep moving forward. Go forward weeping. You might cry over Moses being dead or whatever. <laughs> yeah. But I still got a plan for you. And maybe you've lost somebody in your life. And I, my dad died when I was 30. My mom died when I was 23. I had a brother die when I was little. I mean, I mean, it, it's a challenge that you're going to walk through. But you can either wallow in the pity or you can go for it. Mm. God has a great plan for your life. And it's not based on who's not here. It's based on who's in here. The greater one lives on the inside of you as a born-again child of God. He has a great plan for your life, and he wants to help you. He wants you to walk it out with him. So keep moving forward. Renew your mind to how much he loves you, and watch what God can do with your life. That's so good, Anthony. All right, well, that's the end of round two. Stick around. We're going to be right back with more Ring of Faith. If you would like to have Anthony or Leanne Cooper speak at your next event, contact us at info at ringoffaithtv.com or you can write to us at P.O. Box 1110, Mount Juliet, Tennessee, 37121. Welcome back to the Ring of Faith there. Our show is called Who's Next? Who's Next? (laughs) Come on now, who's next? (laughs) Cool. I'm your Huckleberry. <laughs> All right. So in the earlier rounds, we were talking about this outreach we did 
for the widow of your old roommate. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, when Anthony and I first got married, you left that house. We got married and moved in together, obviously. Mm -hmm. And, uh, things weren't just right away smooth for us. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, I was an angel, <laughs> but you know, sometimes there are devils in your life. And so you just, <laughs> no, really, no, we had no idea how to have a marriage and work on a relationship. And so I was going this way and he was going that way. And, and never the two shall collide. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. We live our own it. separate lives. Yeah, we live separate lives in the same house, at least part of the time, you mm. know, in the same house. But, you know, those early years were a challenge until I really surrendered my life to God. Thank God, you know, some great people were placed in my life that shared my with aunt. me. My aunt. <laughs> truths. My aunt. His aunt shared some <laughs> truths about standing on God's word. And boy, I got a hold of it. I was hungry. I was desperate. You know, I stood on God's word for our marriage. Mm -hmm. And we really started to see a change, not overnight, but over time in our relationship mm -hmm. with both God and each other. And of course, Anthony, then you had this idea to yeah. write a song. I had the idea for a hook of a song years ago called A Woman Who Prayed a Man Out of Me. Mm -hmm. And and I, I used to love <laughs> country music. I grew up on George Jones, Merle Haggard, Mark Chestnut, George Ray, all those old sad country mm -hmm. songs. And I mean, I love that stuff. Well, this idea that I had was, it was a country kind of hook ideal. And so, I'd, I, I mean, I, was, I held on to it for a couple of years and then I, well, I stand on church one day because I sang at the, on our praise team, and I'm an amazing singer. But I, I saw a guy out in the, in the audience, and I was like, that's him. I gotta ask him, his name is Josh Pruno. He's a great singer, songwriter. He's got a couple songs on, on, on YouTube, uh, videos, and I was like, I need to ask him. So I went and asked him, I said, yeah, man, we'll write. We'll come over Friday night. Went over Friday night, him and I wrote this song in about an hour. It's called A Woman Who Prayed a Man Out of Me. He sings it better than I do, because I mean, he's, he's a really good singer. But um, we did a music video for this song, and I got to play a cowboy. You know, and I always, you know, there's an old song, you know, I should have been a cowboy, and I really should have. You know, I, I like the hats and the boots, and I just don't like horses or getting dirty or like the <laughs> smell. and Farms or yeah, all that. the country. I mean, if I could be a cowboy, or... like with just a hat and the boots and stuff, I should have been a cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, check out our new music video, Ring of Faith Has Gone Country. Here it is, the debut, The Woman Who Prayed a Man Out of Me. Still there, praying, Jesus, Jesus, please help. Please help. She's the woman who prayed a man out of me. When the golden got tough, she got to. 
to her knees Found scripture to believe on Like Mark 11, 23 She's the one who prayed a man out of me Who one step at a time Day after day Finding the man that God wants me to be Through long nights for reading The words written in red Alongside my woman Pray to Jesus Please help If you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, we're going to give you an opportunity to pray a prayer right now. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10 and verse 9 that if you'll confess that Jesus is your Lord, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you shall be saved. I'm going to say this prayer. I encourage you to say it with your mouth, to mean it from your heart. Say, Father God. Father God. I come to you in Jesus' name. I come to you in Jesus' name. Jesus, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. I believe God raised you from the dead. I believe God raised you from the dead. I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. I ask for all your gifts. I ask for all your gifts. I believe I receive. I believe I receive. Salvation. Salvation. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 3 that no man can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Confess out loud, Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Lord. You just got born again. I encourage you to get into a full Bible teaching church. And if you're in the Nashville, Mount Juliet area, come to Joy Church in Mount Juliet. And if you've been blessed by this program and you feel led to give financially, go to ringoffaithtv.com. Click on the Donate tab. You'll find all the information you need to help us bring the Word of God to the world. Renew your mind to God's Word by seeing, saying, and believing His promises. And, and that's how you become, become a knockout, knockout artist in life. life.